Let's go over the questions from our part two of our mock EOC. Number one, which expression is equivalent to 24x squared minus 22x plus five? All right, when I see this, I think, um, I look at the answer choices and I see that they're factors, which makes me automatically jump to Mustang factoring. I know the first thing with Mustang factoring is that I'm going to have to factor out a GCF if there is one. So I go through and I check. These are both divisible by two, but that's not. Looks like we do not have a GCF. So now I can move on. My father drives a red Mustang. My A is 24. My B is negative 22. My C is five. I'm gonna do multiply A times C. So 24 times five is 120. So I'm looking for factors of 120 that add up to negative 22. Okay, so I can go through my list and I can list them all out if I need to. One times 120. Remember, you can just type in your calculator, like 120 divided by two will tell you two times 60. 120 divided by three, etc. Four and 30, 5 and 24, 120 divided by 6 is 20, 120 divided by 7 is a decimal, so I don't write it down, 8 times 15, and 10 times 12. So I can make my list like this. Then I'm looking for what two numbers can add up to negative 22, and I'm gonna jump straight to 10 and 12. So I have 10 times 12 gives me 120. I need the 22 to be negative. So I'm gonna do negative 10 times negative 12 because a negative times a negative is positive. Negative 10 plus negative 12 is negative 22. So I found my factors and I write it in factored form okay next step is to divide by to divide by a a is 24 divide by a next step is to reduce you can type into your calculator 10 divided by 24 and if it gives you a decimal you're going to hit math enter enter okay and then 12 divided by 24 is a half right so x minus one half reduced. The final step is to move. I'm gonna move any denominators to in front of the variable. Move 12 there and I'm gonna move two there. That's gonna give me 12x minus five times two x minus one. So C was the correct answer. If you couldn't remember the process or you got stuck, you made a mistake, you got frustrated, whatever it was, remember you can always work backwards, not always, but sometimes work backwards when you have multiple choice problems. So you could have gone through and you could have said, okay, I'm gonna check answer choice C. 12X times 2X is 24X squared. 12X times negative one is negative 12X. Negative five times 2X is 10X. Negative five times negative one is positive five. Negative 12 and negative 10 gives me negative 22. So I could have found that this was the correct answer by m d double distributing or foiling and, and matching this with the original problem, okay? Check your work, okay? It's a good way to check. All right, let's go to number two. What's the equation, oh no, sorry guys. What's the equation in slope intercept form of a line that passes through the point five zero and is parallel to the line represented by y equals 1.2x plus 3.8? Hopefully you remembered and if not, you wrote on your, on your um, brain dump that parallel lines have the same slopes. 
So if parallel lines have the same slopes, then I can just use the slope from this line, which I know is 1.2. So my slope is 1.2 if I'm, if I'm going parallel to this line. And then I also know it goes through the point 5, 0. So I have an x, a y, and an m, right? m is 1.2, x is 5, y is 0, okay? Rem you, the main thing that they're checking here is, do you know that parallel lines have the same slope? Do you recognize that I can use this 1.2 from this equation as my slope? And you do, because we've done it a bunch of times and you're awesome. So now I'm just going to use y equals mx plus b. I'm going to plug it all in. 0 for y, 1.2 for m, 5 for x. I don't know b. Because I know three of the four things, I can solve for the missing one. 1. 1.2 times 5 is 6. I need to subtract 6 from both sides to get b by itself. So b is negative 6. In order to write the equation of the line, I need the y-intercept and the slope. So my final answer is one, y equals 1.2x minus 6. A. Okay? So you slope-intercept form, plug in everything you know, solve for the b, and then write your equation. Let's look at number 3. A golfer hit a golf ball from a tee box that is 6 yards above the ground. The graph shows the height and yards of the golf ball above the ground as a quadratic function of x, the horizontal distance in yards of the golf ball from the tee. Okay, so the horizontal distance from the tee box to the actual ball. All right, what is the domain of the function for this situation? Let's say you read all of this and you were like, oh my gosh, horizontal and distance and golfing and I don't know anything about any of this stuff, tee box, oh gosh. The picture will show you the domain. So even if all of that stuff was a little mind-boggling, a little crazy, a little hard to read, it's okay. You can still get the answer, the correct answer. What is the domain of the function? We know domain goes left to right and deals with our x's. So if I'm trying to box it in, it goes from here to here. So from 0, the x value, to 230. So the correct answer, 0 less than or equal to x, less than or equal to 30. We see that it's a colored in dot in both spots. That's why there's the equal to. And it goes from 0 to 230. So f was the correct answer. If you forgot what domain was, remember you can check your uh, brain dump where you wrote it down right here along the side. Domain is your x that goes left to right. Really put some effort into making sure you have this brain dump fully memorized and that you understand how to use it. Okay. Okay. A company collected data for the number of text messages sent and received using a text message application since October 2011. The table shows the number of text messages sent and received in billions over time. The data can be modeled by a quadratic function. Here's your table. What function best models the data? I'm going to go with my yellow star on this one. 100% calculator problem. And I'm going to use the work backwards method. So I'm going to take the, uh, sorry, second. I'm going to take the equations that are given, and I'm going to work backwards. Now, in this problem, I wrote you a little hint on the test because I'm not a huge fan of how this is set up, but this has been seen on an actual EOC test. It asks you which one best models the data, which means it may not match up exactly. So really we're looking for which one of these equations is the closest to creating this table. So I have negative 0.002x squared plus 0.55x plus 5.02. Remember that you can't type in t. We use x for whatever the input is. Okay? So let's see. This one at 5, I'm at 7.72. That's not close. So we're going to eliminate this one. Second one, 0.072x squared minus 0.15x plus 2.73. Let me go to my table. 5, I have 3.78. 
that's pretty close. 10, I have 8.43, eight and a half, close to 10, I guess. For 15, I have 16.68, so we're pretty close so far. For 20, I have 27 on the table and 28 and a half here, so I'm within one and a half points. That's not too far off. For 25, I have 44 or 43.98. That one's very close. For 30, I have 63.03 and 64. That's pretty close. For 35, I have 86 on the table and 85.7 in the in the, in the calculator, that's very close. And for 40, I have 111.9 or 112. So right now I'm thinking, okay, if it's only which one best models it, B is a possibility. I'm gonna go in and check the other ones to make sure and rule them out. 002x squared plus 5.02. Did I make that negative? I did. Go to my table. Let's see, I'll just look at my 35 because I'm right here. 35 and 2.57, no way, that one's definitely not right. Let's go back in and try the last one. 0.072x squared plus 2.73. 35, I'm at 90, that's not too terribly far off. 40, I'm at 106. 18, that's further off than the other one was. Oops. 30, I'm at 67.5. Well, that was only one point, one and a half points off in the other one. 25, I'm at 47. Yeah, these are a little too far off, right? 20, I'm at 31.5. That's not close enough. 10, I'm at 9.9, that one was close. Five, I'm at three. This B is definitely a better fit than D. So B is the correct answer. Again, I do not like that they did not give you the exact numbers, but be aware that that is a possibility because this question was on a test that was a, an algebra one star test, okay? The table shows the linear rep, uh, relationship between the average height and feet of trees on a tree farm and the number of years since the trees were planted. What is the rate of change of the average height and feet of the trees on the farm with respect to the number of years since the trees were planted? What does rate of change mean? Slope. If you have your math chart down, you know that we wrote where did we write it? All the, right here. Rate of change equals slope equals the slope formula equals change in y over x equals rise over run. All of those things mean slope, okay? So we know we're looking for the slope of a line. And because we have that all there together, we know that this is a way that we could find it. We could do y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. That's an option. Let's do it. I have the point 110. This will be your x's, this will be your y's. And I have the point 324. This is just a reminder of how to do slope formula. X1, Y1, X2, Y2. Okay. Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. 24 minus 10. 14 over 2, which is 7. So the slope of the line is 7 feet per year. Um, here's another thing to think about. They actually did not tell us that this was linear. Do you all remember how to check if a table is linear? This is a great review because you could be asked about this. Change in y over change in x was how we checked right the difference in the y's over the difference in the x's so let's do that real fast 10 24 minus 10 is 14 45 minus 24 is 21 80 minus 45 is 35 and 108 minus 80 is 28 okay that's the change in y's the x's 3 minus 1 is 2 
6 minus 3 is 3. 11 minus 6 is 5. 15 minus 11 is 4. Now remember, in order for it to be linear, they all have to be the same. But what has to be the same is the ratio, so the actual fraction. So 14, let me do it down here, 14 over 2 and 21 over 3, change in y over change in x, 35 over 5, 28 over 4. 14 divided by 2 is 7, 21 divided by 3 is 7, 35 divided by 5 is 7, 28 divided by 4 is 7. They're all equal, which tells us this table is linear with a slope of 7. I know that was a little bit extra there, but that is something you could be asked about is do, does this represent a linear table? And that is how you would check it, okay? And we don't want to just use two points in the slope formula if we don't already know that it's linear, all right? So seven feet per year was the correct answer. Which graph best represents negative 5y equals negative 6x plus 15? We know that before we can graph, we need the slope and the y-intercept. So I can put this, oh, sorry. I can put this into slope-intercept form by solving for y, okay? So I'm going to divide by negative 5 all the way through. Y equals negative 6 over negative 5 is going to give me a positive 6 fifths. 15 divided by negative 5 is going to give me a negative 3. So I'm looking for the line 6 fifths X minus 3. Okay? So first thing I'm going to do is, okay, I know that my slope is 6 fifths and my Y intercepts negative 3. I'm going to look for a graph that has a y-intercept at negative 3. Negative 3 is right here. Eliminate. This one goes through negative 3. That one goes through negative 3. That one does not eliminate. I've already got it down to only two options. Now, my slope is positive. This is a negative slope. Eliminate. So now I'm just going to double check. It goes through negative 3. If I rise 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, run 1, 2, 3, three, four, five, I'm back on the line. So C is your correct answer. Okay. All right. The linear parent function F is graphed on the grid. Here's my linear parent function. We know that the linear parent function is Y equals X because we write it on our math chart every single time we do the brain dump. So this is the function y equals x, okay? Which graph best represents negative x plus 3? So what this means is right now our f of x is x. So basically, this means h of x needs to be negative x because negative x plus 3. Okay, so just like in the last problem, I'm going to pull out my slope, it's negative 1. I'm going to pull out my y-intercept, which is 3. And then I'm going to go through my answer choices. And first I'm going to see, does it cross through positive 3? That one does. That one doesn't. Eliminate. That one does. That one doesn't. Eliminate. So now I'm down to just two choices. Now I see my slope is negative. This one, positive slope. It has to be G. I'm going to double check. My y-intercept's at 3. I rise 1, run 1 to the left, and I'm back on the line. Therefore, it is correct. So G was the correct answer. All right. Ooh. Let's look at number 8. A customer at a store paid $64 for three large candles and four small candles. At the same store, a second customer paid four more than the first customer for one large candle and eight small candles. The price of each large candle is the same and the price of each small candle is the same. Which system of equations can be used to find the price in dollars of each large candle X? So X is price of large. And each small candle Y. Y is price of small, okay? Okay, let's break it down. Let's look at the two customers. First customer, three large, so three times the price of a large, 
and, which would be plus, for small, four times the price of a small, they paid $64. Second customer pays four more than the first, so that's going to be $68, 64 plus four. Um, one large candle, so one times x, plus eight smalls. 3x plus 4y equals 64 is our first customer. x plus 8y equals 68 is our second customer. There is our system of equations. So C was the correct answer. Okay. Number 9. What is the value of the y-intercept of the graph of uh, h of x equals 29 times 5.2 raised to the x power? I'm going to yellow star this one because this is going to be 100% a calculator problem. Y equals 29 times 5.2 to the X. Now, if you remember from talking about exponential functions, we know that the A right there, the 29, is our initial amount, right? Because we know that with exponential functions, a is the initial amount. Well, we know with graphs, the initial amount or the starting point is our y-intercept. So we could actually answer this question without even using the calculator if we remembered that A is your y-intercept. But let's say you didn't remember that. So you go in and you graph it. And you see the graph. And then you know that the value of the y-intercept is where x equals 0. When x equals 0, I'm at the y-intercept. So I'm going to go to my table, and I'm going to go to where x equals 0, and there's my answer, 29. Okay? We know x is always 0 at the y-intercept. So I just go into my table and find where x is 0, and I got my answer. Okay? Let's look at the next one. What is the equation in slope-intercept form of a line that crosses the x-axis at 36, and is perpendicular to the line represented by y equals negative 4 ninths x plus 5. If I'm crossing the x-axis at 36, my point is 36 comma 0, right? If I'm on the x-axis, y is 0. Perpendicular lines have opposite reciprocal slopes. And if you have your brain dumped down, you have that written down for yourself opposite reciprocal slopes, perpendicular lines. That means change the sign, flip the fraction. So I'm going to go instead of negative 4 over 9, I'm going to go to positive 9 over 4. Okay? So I have an x, I have a y, and I have an m. I'm going to solve for the b. I'm going to use y equals mx plus b. Plug everything in that I know. Um, 9 over 4, remember if you're typing that into your calculator, put the 9 fourths in parentheses, times 36 is 81. That means to get B by itself, I have to subtract 81 from both sides. So my y-intercept is negative 81, my slope is 9 over 4. Okay, not y-intercept of 81, this is a negative 81, it's got to be J. All right? Same process that we did on the one that was per parallel, except for parallel lines have the same slope. Perpendicular lines have opposite reciprocal slopes. Number 11, which graph best represents the system of equations and its solution? All right. First thing I need to do is I need to get these into slope-intercept form so that I can see the slope and the y-intercept. So 8x minus 4y equals negative 16. I'm going to subtract 8x from both sides. Remembering I can't combine 8x and negative 16 because those are not like terms. And then I'm going to divide by negative 4. Okay. 
That leaves me with y equals 2x plus 4. There's one of my lines. And now let's get the other line. 3x plus 15y equals negative 6. I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides. I have 15y equals negative 3x minus 6. And I'm going to divide by 15. That leaves me with y equals negative 1 fifth x minus 0.4. And I'm going to leave that as a decimal. Okay? This is our second line. So now I just need to go in and find which graph matches up. So let's look at A. Positive 4. I need a y-intercept at positive 4. Eliminate A. Positive 4. Eliminate C. Positive 4. Eliminate D. Okay. Well, that took us right to our answer. Just looking at the y-intercept of one of the equations is 4. So now I'm just going to make sure this is right. Okay. A y-intercept of 4. I rise 2, run 1. That's that line. This one, a y-intercept at point 0.4. That looks correct. Rise 1, run 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to the left. That's correct. B is the right answer. Keep in mind you need them in slope-intercept form before you can graph them or look at a graph of them or just in general quite often you're going to need to solve for y. Okay? Number 12, the graph of the quadratic parent function f was transformed to create the graph of g of x equals f of x plus 2 minus 5. Which graph best re represents g? Okay, so this is mostly a calculator problem because we're just going to type it in. But one important thing that you did have to know is, first of all, you needed to know what the quadratic parent function is, which, again, we also have the quadratic parent function written on our brain dump. So y equals x squared. So our f of x is going to be x squared. It says our g of x is f of x plus 2. So now for g of x, I'm plugging f in here. So now my x plus 2 becomes squared. And I still have that minus 5. Because of this, it tells you right here that this is your f of x plus 2. So our f of x ha has to s come in and square the x plus 2. Okay? Now, you could go ahead and square that out, you know, by hand, x plus 2 times x plus 2, but you really don't need to because the calculator will do that for us. So let's just type g of x into the calculator. Open parentheses, x plus 2 squared minus 5. And I'm going to hit graph. And I'm going to kind of look at the options. To me, it looks like H is going to be, oops, H is going to be our best option, but I'm definitely going to go to the table and check a few points. 0, negative 1, that looks good. 1, 4, that looks good. Negative 2, negative 5, yes, that looks good. And let's do negative 4, negative 1. Yes, H is the correct answer. And like I said, almost completely a, a calculator problem, but you did have to know this information in order to get it into your calculator. Okay? Which function is equivalent to 9x squared minus 24x plus 16? I'm going to Mustang factor this. My father drives a red Mustang, and I knew I needed to do that because these are all in factored form. A is 9, B is negative 24, and C is 16. All right, I'm going to start off multiplying A times C. So 9 times 16 is 144. I'm looking for two numbers that add to 144 that multiply to negative 12. And I just happen to know that 12 times 12 is 144 because that's a perfect square. So 
I recognize, okay, well, 12 times 12, 12 and 12 will add to 24. This needs to be positive, this needs to be negative. So negative 12 plus negative 12 is negative 24. Negative 12 times negative 12 is positive 144. So I write it into factored form. I'm done with that step. Next step was to divide by A. And you know what? I jumped right in without even making sure that there wasn't a GCF. So I need to go back and check. Four between those two, but not that one. No, no GCF. Okay. Remember to check that first. Mustang factoring will not work correctly if there's a GCF in there. Okay. So I'm on divide by A. A is nine. 12 divided by 9 is going to be reduced to 4 over 3. So x minus 4 over 3, x minus 4 over 3, and the final step is to move. So I get 3x minus 4 times 3x minus 4. Done with my process, so I go look at my answer choices. I notice that 3x minus 4 times 3x minus 4 is not there, but I recognize that 3x minus 4 squared is equivalent to this. So j is the correct answer. That was just like one that we had on the uh, quadratics assignment. Very good. All right, number 14. The graph of the quadratic function k is shown on the grid. Which statements are best supported by the graph of k? All right, let's see. The x-intercept is located at negative 3, 0. Negative 3, 0, true. That is an x-intercept. The coordinates of the y-intercept are 0, 9. Over 0, up 9, true. That is the y-intercept. The axis of symmetry is at x equals negative 3. Axis of symmetry is going to be here. That's a vertical line, meaning it's in the form x equals, it crosses through negative 3. That is true. All of them are true, so j is the right answer. That's just those key attributes of quadratics. Number 15, a grill at a barbecue restaurant will, will be used to cook sausage links that are 2 pounds each and brisket that's 6 pounds each. No more than 120 pounds of sausage links and briskets can be cooked on the grill, which inequality represents all possible combinations of X, number of sausages, and Y, the number of briskets. Okay. Well, sausages are two pounds each, so two times however many sausages there are. Plus, briskets are six pounds each, so six times however many briskets there are, has to be no more than, so I'm going to say it has to be less than 120. But can it be equal to 120? Well, if I am 120, am I more than 120? No, I'm equal, so equal also works. No more than would be less than or equal. So the correct answer is B. Okay. 16. The graph of the linear function is shown on the grid. What is the rate of change of y with respect to x for this function? We know rate of change is slope. I'm given two points. Now, I could just rise and run, but 3.6, it's going to be hard to figure out, right? So I'm actually going to do the um, slope formula. I'm going to use the points they gave me, negative 3, 3.6, 5, 2. My first point, x1, y1. Second point, x2, y2. And I use the slope formula. y2 minus y1 over x2 minus a negative ends up being positive, x1. That's negative 1.6 over positive 8. Um, negative 1.6 divided by 8 reduces to negative 1 fifth. And then it's said to enter it as a decimal. Obviously, you won't be able to put any fractions in a gridable. 
So if it came down to that, you would need to write it as a decimal. Negative 0.2. You could have also written negative 0 0.2. Either one of those. Okay. Number 17. What is the solution to negative 6m plus 8 equals 4 times 17 minus m? This is a Solving equations problem, so let's do it. Negative 6m plus 8 equals 4 times 17 minus m. I'm going to start by distributing. That negative right there represents a negative 1. It's going to end up changing the signs. So I have negative 6m minus 8. Over here, I'm going to distribute the 4. 4 times 17 is 68 minus 4 times m is 4m. All right, I'm going to, okay, everything is simplified, so now I'm going to get all the variables together. Add 4m to both sides. That gives me negative 2m minus 8 equals 68. And then I'm going to need to add 8 to both sides. Negative 2m equals uh, 76. So now um, I need to divide by negative 2. And m equals negative 38. Should have typed in negative 38. All right. Keep on going. Y'all hang in there. Keep listening. These are all super important. It's important that you understand if you made a mistake, why you made your mistake, and more importantly, how to do it correctly so we don't make the same mistakes again, okay? So deep breath. Here we go. Let's push through to the end. A part of an exponential function is graphed on the grid. Which inequality best represents the domain of the part shown? Domain is our x's, and we know we move from left to right to find the domain. Starting at the left, I move this way. First place I see graph is at negative 2. I continue on, and then I notice, okay, it goes on forever and ever and ever. So x is everything greater than or equal to negative 2. All right? Number 19, which graph best represents y equals negative x squared plus 6x minus 1? I'm going yellow star on this one. This is going to be 100% calculator problem. I'm going to go into my y equals negative x squared plus 6x minus 1. And first I'm just going to look at the graphs, see which one it looks like. I'm going to say it looks like one of these two, right? But these are pretty similar. That one goes up a little higher. So let's go to the table. 0, negative 1. Okay, we know it's definitely not C or B, right? 0, negative 1. That looks like it's on this one. Oh, it's not on this one. It's not D. We already eliminated it. Let's check some more points just to make sure. 2, 7. 2, 7. Yes. Good. Let's check one more. 6, negative 1. Yep. A is the correct answer. There's another 100% calculator problem for you. Number 20. The table shows a linear relationship between x and y. What is the rate of change of y with respect to x? Rate of change, again, we're talking about the slope. It already told us it was linear. So we know that we can stat edit it. So you know what? I'm yellow star in this one too. Another 100% calculator problem. Let's go in, stat, edit. Negative 20, negative 12, negative 6, negative 2. Okay. 96, 60, 33, 15. All right. Stat, calc. Linear regression. The equation is y equals negative 4.5 plus 6, oh, x. Y equals negative 4.5x plus 6. 
I was asked specifically about the slope, which is our m. I look at my answer choices, they're all fractions. So I'm going to do negative 4.5, math, enter, enter. And it's going to turn it into negative 9 over 2 for me. A is the correct answer. Okay? Are there other methods? Absolutely. You could have done the change in y over change in x for the whole table. You could have done the slope equation, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Lots of options. could use strictly the calculator for that one. Number 21. A company advertises on a website. A worker tracked the number of visits to the website and the number of clicks on the advertisements. The table shows the data for several days. A linear function can be used to model the data. Okay, we know it's linear now because it just told us. Based on the table, what's the best prediction of the number of clicks on the advertisements if 1,500 people visit the website? I'm going to say another calculator problem. We finished out the test with lots of calculator problems here. Let's stat edit it. Now, I have to type in every single point because this could be representing a scatter plot and I need to find the line of best fit. So here we go. 153, 629. 471, 914, 307, 1045, 510, 1106. Okay, I'm going to scroll back through and make sure I did those right. 14, 38, 30, 53, 21, 60, 32, 63. Okay. Stat, calc, linear regression because they told us it was linear and look at these numbers that I get all right I'm going to write down the numbers let's say y equals point zero five one nine three five I'm gonna go about that far I don't want to round too early or else I'm um, not gonna be as accurate 5.53927. That's good. That's good. About that far. Okay. Now, the question asks, what if, what are the number of clicks on the advertisement if 1,500 people visit the website? Number of visits to the website. So if this was in this column, we're trying to figure out what goes there. I should not use X. Let's use a question mark. Okay. So I'm just going to plug in 1,500 in the place of X. So, 0.051935 times 1500 plus 5.53927. I got 83.44. Look at my answer choices. H is the only one that's even close, so I am good. Okay. The closer the answer choices were together, the more digits you would need in your equation to make sure that you're super accurate. All right. Which graph best represents y equals 10 times 0.85 to the x power? Holy, holy cow, another calculator problem. Lots of calculator problems here at the end. Here we go. y equals 10 times 0.85 to the x. Let's go to the graph first, see what we're looking at here. We got something that looks like this. So my initial reaction is, oh, that y'all can't see it. My initial reaction is that it's going to be G, right? It's definitely not going this direction. And it doesn't look like it's going to match up with that, but I'm still going to go in because I'm going all the way up to 14 over here and here. I'm going to go to my table. 0, 10, 0, 10. Good. Um, I was going to see if I can find another whole number. No. Let's go 4, 5.2. 4, I'm at 5. Yep, a little bit above 5. And let's go 10, 1.9. 10, 1, yep, almost a 2. G is the correct answer. 100% calculator. Type it in, match it up. All right, a couple more, y'all. Here we go. Number 23, what is the x value, the value of x, in the solution to the system of equations? 
All right, I'm going to use the graphing method because then I can rely on my calculator more heavily. But I know in order to type them in the calculator, they have to be in y equal. Well, the second one is, so let's just get the first one solved for y. I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides. Oh, purple and purple. I get negative 5y equals negative 3x plus 22. And I'm going to, oops, I'm going to divide by negative 5. That leaves me with, oops, y equals negative divided by negative is a positive. So, um, yeah, 3 fifths x. And then I'm just going to write it, now, ne positive divided by negative is negative, just the way it is. And when I type it in my calculator, I'm going to type it in just like that. I don't want to deal with a big old decimal. Those are the two equations I'm going to be typing in my calculator. Negative 5x plus 32. And the second equation, open parentheses, 3 over 5, close parentheses, times x, minus, open parentheses, 22 over 5. And I'm going to graph, graph it. All right, I can see the point of intersection. Now I'm going to second trace. I'm looking for number 5, the point of intersection. 6.5. Comma negative one half. It asked me for the x value. So 6.5 is my answer. Okay? All right. Number 24. System of equations is graphed. Which system of equations does the graph represent? Okay. We know in order to um, write the equation of a line, we need the slope. And we need the y-intercept. So for each of these lines, I'm going to find those two things. This one looks like the y-intercept's at 4. So my b is 4. Rise 1, run 1. I'm going to make sure we are counting by 1s. Yes, rise 1, run 1. My slope is 1. So the equation of that line is x plus 4. y equals x plus 4. Now let's do the orange. I'm going to call it an orange line. Y-intercept here looks like it's at negative 4, with the slope being rise 1, 2, run 1 to the left, so negative 2. Rise 2, 1 to the left is going to give me negative. Negative 2x minus 4. So, looks like j is the correct answer. x plus 4, negative 2x minus 4. Need slope and y-intercept to write the equation of the line. So you just pick those right off the graph. Two more, everybody, two more. Let's get them done. The expression x to the 22nd times x to the 7th raised to the 3rd is equivalent to x to the p. What is the value of p? All right, so I have x to the 22nd. And then I have multiplying powers with the same base. When I mul I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Power to power first. We have. 7 raised to the third. x to the seventh raised to the third. Power to power, we multiply the exponents. So 7 times 3 is 21. Now we have multiplying powers with the same base. When we multiply powers with the same base, we add their exponents. If you don't remember the laws of powers, that's okay. They are given to you on your math chart. Okay? x to the 43rd is the answer. It asks, it's this reduces down to x to the p, and what's the value of p? So 43 was your answer. Last one. Let's make it a good one. Here we go. The graph of f of x equals x squared was transformed to create the graph of g of x equals f of x minus 9. Which statement about the graph is true? Okay. So we talked about this couple times on this test already. f of x equals x squared. So that means in the place of f, f of x right here, I have to So my f of x is just x squared. My g of x is then x squared minus 9, because I replaced the f of x with what it was equal to. Okay? So I'm going to kind of sketch those graphs out. 
So I have a visual of what's going on so that I can figure this out. Now, f of x equals x squared, that's the quadratic parent function, just kind of looks like that. And I can type those into my calculator and get the graphs. So I type the second one in and it looks like this, oops, it should be like the same shape. Sorry, that's not very good, but crossing at negative nine. So this is sort of not a very good sketch of what they look like. So let's see what the answer choices say. The graph of g of x, okay, now, now, now let me label them so I don't get them confused. My perf purple is my f of x, and my blue or teal is my g of x. Okay, here we go. The graph of g is a reflection. Reflection would mean it would flip, right? Definitely not a reflection. Don't even need to keep going. The vertex of the graph of G is nine units to the right. No, did not move to the right. The graph of G is a reflection. No, no reflecting happening. The y-intercept of the graph of G is nine units below the y-intercept of the graph of X. This moved down nine units, so D is the correct answer. I know that was a lot of problems, guys, and we've been working really hard, and I'm really proud of how well y'all have done. Again, we want to really focus on correcting any mistakes we made so that we do not make those same mistakes again. And let's go master this test, guys.